Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Head, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host on, and I don't know if because the NFL is over, or maybe it's because the uh, residents at WFAN did not take their medication on Tuesday, but this is another episode of the insane asylum known as WFAN. They're coming to take me away, ha ha, they're coming to take me away, ho ho, hee hee, ha ha, to the funny fun. Now, welcome back to the Baseball Hut 2, and hope you like this video, and hit that subscribe button. So, we are back here discussing the insane asylum known as the legendary sports talk radio uh, station, WFAN. And like I said, as the intro for this video, I don't know if because the Super Bowl is over, or they're not taking their medication. It didn't seem like they were taking their medication on Tuesday, because they were bouncing off the walls. Holy shit. Bouncing off the walls on, I don't know, it's because they, some of these guys have not, like, uh, gonna have a good Valentine's Day, but for some reason they were flipping out on Tuesday. And I got all these articles with them, I mean, complete, total insanity took place today on the fan, on the fan. Now, as you know, NFL season's over. Uh, we have pitchers and catchers. We had that Monday. We had the Mets, uh, Dave Stearns do a press conference. On Tuesday, they had the manager, Carlos Mendoza. I'm sure they will have wonderful takes on Mendoza's press conference. And uh, you talk about insane takes. This stuff is all over the place, folks. Let me start from odyssey.com. From probably the angriest guy on the fan. And probably the... He thinks he's funny. And they laugh at his little jokes and stuff. But Greg Giannotti of... Boomer and Geo, or as I like to call him, Norman and Greg, he's a very angry guy. He's a guy that there's no, he is, and the hut means zero sense of humor. He, he does impressions and that of people that are at the station, people from that used to work at the station. He is one of the most catty individuals at that station. He, he likes to slam people. He says a lot of them have gambling problems, which is, which is terrible. He does this on the air and talks about this stuff. There is no bigger uh, gossip monger than Greg Giannotti. And I'm surprised that people haven't gone to him and, and, and threatened to tell him to hell, shut the hell up. I'm surprised that hasn't happened. I'm surprised there hasn't been more of a war against him. But the read you, and this is all Mets-centric. Now, if you're a big Mets fan and you've been following this channel... I am the alternative to this insanity. And this is why talk radio is dying too. Is talk radio is dying for a very simple reason. And that's because people are tired of this nonsense. Tired of this insane kind of talk. You can't, there's like no joy with these people. And they like the ran in everybody's parade. So I'm odyssey.com. Greg slams Steve Cohen's excitement for baseball season. Not a single reason to pay attention. As Super Bowl 58 came to an end, tweets from various MLB team social media accounts began flooding the feed. Teasing the end of one season and the beginning of another as pitchers and catchers get set to report to spring training this week. Mets owner Steve Cohen was among those to tweet out the start of the baseball season, which Greg emphatically shot down. I'm going to read you this. This is what he said on the air. When Steve Cohen tweets out after the Super Bowl, yeah, it's finally baseball season. No, it's not, Greg said. You signed, get this, you signed like 15 schmucks nobody's ever heard of. You got the Knicks, Rangers, and Islanders playing well. And the NFL is going to be king throughout the offseason. Well, give us a reason to pay attention to your loser baseball team. And maybe it will be baseball season. I want to point out something, a couple of things. Greg Giannotti said, four days after the Mets hired David... And we'll talk about David Stearns' video. Uh, he said, four days after David Stearns was hired by the Mets, he should be fired. Giannotti, more than anybody, likes to pretend that he's somebody else. And he likes to pretend that he's, a, that he's another Mets fan. He says he's a Mets fan. But he likes to pretend that he's us. He is not us. He is not me. Greg didn't want to hear any excitement coming from Cohen, 
who he felt would be looking to bring in big name talent this winter after the disastrous 23 campaign. Instead, he feels no juice heading into the spring. Well, Greg, that's your effing problem. That's your effing problem. We all know you're a little woo 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 in the head. So nobody cares really. This is why your medium is dying. This is why sports radio. Now, radio isn't dying, but sports radio is dying. Entercom, who has who is the company that runs WFN, uh, claimed bankruptcy a few weeks ago. So they're in a lot of trouble. Quote, that just annoyed me. Think about what's going on right now. We've got the aftermath of the NFL. We've got the Nixon Rangers, and we get baseball seasons finally here from the owner of the Mets, who have done nothing this offseason. This is the quietest, most boring offseason ever. There's not a single reason to pay attention to the Mets. Oh, okay. Well, then don't be a Mets fan. Do us a favor. Don't talk about it. This, this is the, I would mention this, a couple of things. This morning program has been on the attack on Steve Cohen since he bought the team. They are very close friends with Dave Portnoy. Again, Dave Portnoy tried to buy the Mets with, with Alex Rodriguez and Jennifer Lopez and Travis Kelsey. That did not happen. So they are on the attack, and they've been on the attack for three years, folks. So don't let this nonsense that they, they speak for us. They don't speak for us at all. And let me get you into the next article and some more insanity uh, from Odyssey.com. Greg now inspired by David Stern's take on success. We're going Brody Van Wagenen now. <clears throat> David Stern told reporters on Monday that there are multiple ways to define success when looking ahead to the 24th season. And that was hardly inspiring to Norman and Greg. We're going Brody Van Wagenen now, Greg said. Nothing Noting the infamous, our optimism needs to be adjusted comments from the former general manager of the Mets. Norman says the success will likely be dictated by how the Peter Alonso... First of all, he talked about there were, there were different ways of being to measure success. That's what he said, okay? A paraphrasing what Stern said. But he also said in this uh, press conference, right after that, he said, we will be judged... On how we win games. We will be judged on if we make postseason. We are trying to get the postseason. We're trying to be a playoff team. This year. Greg didn't mention that. And the article doesn't mention it either. Okay. But this is the kind of mentality. We deal with. If you, I mean if you are a fool. And listen to them. Or watch them on their different. Uh, 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 telecasts. On a different like uh, simulcast, you you have to be crazy to to listen to this and watch this. This is why channels like this. This is why my presence on this threatens them and everybody else that does stuff like like uh, let's talk with Rob and of course uh, Wardy and YM. They we are a threat to their nonsense because we give them something else that they don't get on on the radio. Now. We have a problem with, with what's going on at WFAN. Um, again, I used to be a long-time listener. I never called, but I've been, I was listening when I was a little kid, when I was a kid. So I was listening to them for a long time. And really, I stopped listening on a regular basis after uh, Imus got fired and Mike and the Mad Dog broke up. I didn't really listen that much. And I listened to, to, to Francesca when he had his show on the radio, and I was able to watch it on TV for a while. And really, you know, I, I know a good portion of what the radio station's about. So, you know, it was very frustrating at times back then. But it's ten, a thousand times worse, folks, than when it was with Mike and the Mad Dog where they're goofing on the Mets and stuff like that. And there, again, there was no alternative to even that, you know. Because I'm sure I would be going after them back then, you know. About, I, I remember back in 2005, oh, the Mets lost opening day on a walk-off. And they made a big deal. They had a big offseason. They brought in Pedro. They brought in Beltron. And as soon as the game was over, uh, Mike and the Mets attacked the Mets and the Mets were going to have a terrible season. They weren't joking. And then afterwards, wow, well, we're joking. Bullshit. They weren't joking. They weren't joking. Okay. Now, if I had a show then, if I was doing stuff on, on the line, I probably would have made fun of them. You know. But things have gotten so bad at the fan, on the fan. The way they attack the Mets in particular. Uh, one of the things I've mentioned, and it's been a big thing here, is 
uh, whatever the Mets do is wrong, whatever it is. And when they do it right, it's wrong. And we'll get into this with this thing with the coconut, uh, Brandon Tierney, who's the other half of the, of the, of the Trey Peter Alonzo, uh, uh, fan club. Sal Lacan said today he wants to trade Pete Alonso. Okay. He is too gutless, folks. Sal Licata is too gutless to say that on SNY because, the, quite frankly, the fact of the matter is if, if Licata were to say that on SNY, people watching would want to get him fired. Okay. People would want to get him fired. And that's, I'm not joking. There's a reason why SNY is as popular as it is because the Met fans have no, like, escape from this negativity. We have no escape here, okay, from WFA and, and the personalities. And it's weird because the regular press is not like that. They could be negative with the Mets and stuff, but it's really WFA, and they mock WFA on Friday. And we'll get into, we'll get into this brand Tierney thing, so this connects to Brandon Nimmo. On Friday, I saw a clip um, of the SNY show, uh, Baseball Night in New York, and they were making fun of Sal because Sal had said the Mets should trade Pete Alonso so that Brandon Nimmo could be the leader of the team. And they were making fun of it. Well, anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Here's from Odyssey.com. This is about Brandon Tierney, his, his coconut-headed friend and partner. Again, these WFAN people like to pretend that they know what's going on in the heads of other people. You are just a talk show host. You're not a psychiatrist. You're not a psychologist. You're not a social worker. You have no training whatsoever other than the stuff you get from the uh, Connecticut School of Broadcasting and from Columbia University. Okay? You're not a psychologist. BT, the coconut, doesn't feel Peter Lonzo wants to be a med as much as some think. Okay? You don't feel it all, oh, oh, coconut head. Oh, coconut. S Sal opened <laughs> this show trying to be the voice of reason. As Mets fans panic over the uncertain future, of, there's no panic here. I would met not for me. I believe he'll be a Met. But BT only fanned the flame at the homegrown slugger, potentially sign it elsewhere next season. Now, the guy that has fanned the flames for this has been Sal Licata. He wants to trade Pete. I mean, he's like waffling, and he and he's, and I can tell, watching SNY, that Sal is getting really irritated that he can't like open his stupid mouth, his his disgusting mouth, uh, complaining about it. Quote from the coconut: Dave Stern's not emotionally invested to anybody he inherited, nor should he be. The coconut said. The writing is on the wall, and it stinks. I don't think Pete wants to be here as much as many people think or hope he wants to be here. And I think the Mets are open to moving him. Oh, they're open to moving him to, to see what his value is, one thing. But to act like you know what he's thinking? I don't think the Mets are married to this guy. They do not view him as a smart signing. Uh, what makes you say that? Alonzo is a cornerstone of the current Mets roster, but the coconut believes Stearns has his eyes on stability in the big picture and foresees the new Mets president determined that a long-term deal for Alonzo doesn't fit with the team's plan to make the Mets a consistent contender. David Stearns is here to eventually make the Mets a dynasty. Uh, who said that? He's a forward thinker. He relies on analytics a lot. Outside of power, almost every analytic is unfavorable to Pete, and he knows that. Again, like I said, the members of the, the residents at WFAN think that they are psychiatrists. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And stop pretending to know what's going on in people's heads. Now, here is the, the, the most ridiculous uh, comment. Uh, and this is about Brandon Nimmo. Now, this is even more ridiculous than the things they were saying before this. Uh, on last week, I did a video uh, discussing how uh, Spaz Licata wanted the Mets to trade. He wants the Mets to And he said this. And he said this today. I want the Mets to trade. That's my opinion. Okay. My opinion is I want the Mets to trade him so that Brandon Nimmo could be a captain of the team. Now, I wouldn't mention this about Brandon. Uh, he's been in the majors a little bit longer than Pete. And Brandon has only had two years where he's played every day. Last two years. He's not an everyday, really been an everyday player. But he's captain material. I wouldn't mind him. I wouldn't have a problem with being captain. That's, that's the point. 
Let me let me read you this nonsense, this monkey crap from the coconut. Uh, from Odyssey, BT doesn't see. Get that. I can't believe this 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 Nimcom poop said this. BT doesn't see Brandon Nimmo's captain material for the mess. Quote, just feels like a fake hustle guy. What? <laughs> Maybe he does. As the coconut and spaz debate who needs to step up in the clear clubhouse leader of the Mets, the coconut didn't seem to be too high on the idea of Brandon Nimmo being the top candidate. Get this, folks. For one, he doesn't like Nimmo's shtick of sprinting down the first base after drawing a walk. Quote, I can't believe I'm reading this because nobody does this in Major League Baseball. And this is a guy that's always smiling. There's joy when he plays. Was was Gary Cohen call him the happiest man in baseball? This is not fake. This is a guy that has beaten the odds. He didn't have a high school team in Wyoming. Okay, he didn't have a he didn't have a team. This is a success story. That Brand that Brandon Tierney could never eclipse. Brandon Nimmo is a success story, an American success story. Okay, Brandon Tierney could never, and the hut means ever reach this guy's success. The fact that he was able to get to the majors, and is an everyday player and a very successful one, and a very popular player, and he's attacking the thing that people love about him, his hustle. Brandon Nimmo just feels like a fake hustle guy. He just does the coconut set. What are, you, what are you, seven years old sprinting down the first base? Give me a break. You're not Pete Rose. Well, Pete Rose was a gambler. Gambling degenerate. Hustle and steal some bases. That's a very, like, you know, stealing bases are very can be very overrated. Um... And by this guy's definition, he would say that he'd rather... Oh, this is a weird comparison. Ricky Henderson didn't know his hustle. And a lot of people with Ricky, they people questioned his uh, desire to win a lot of times. So, it's just... Anyway, BT doesn't see the sprinting having any kind of impact on the game, which makes it come across as self-serving, Okay. What does it actually do besides create the visual that you're playing hard, which he does? Okay, so what's the fucking problem? I don't want to be unfair. Oh, no, you don't want to be fair there, Coconut. But in that moment, create an unrealistic max effort situation. You're walking. What are we doing, the Coconut said. Now, I would mention, if he were a Yankee, Brandon Tierney would kiss his fucking ass. So if you... Ha- and I don't normally curse, but I curse a lot of times... For comedic effect. I think this is kind of a way to sort of be comedic in this way. So if you had to choose who should take a captain role for the Mets, BT would take Francisco Lindor, despite holding the opinion that Lindor hasn't brought the production from Cleveland that the Mets were hoping for. And I would say that, you know, he's played really well the last two years. Again, whatever the Mets do is wrong, and whatever they do is right is wrong. See what I mean? I think Lindor is the player that everybody goes to, the coconut said. This is the guy... When I look in the dugout, who is the guy I see communicating with the young players after every bat? It ain't Pete. It ain't Nemo. It's Lindor. Okay? I mean, Tommy Pham, which you assholes uh, put up on a pedestal, said that the three of them are good leaders. they good examples. These guys lead by example. You don't have to always talk to the young players. You lead by example, some of them. My Piazza was a good leader. He led by example. It was hustle. But, I mean, they are so desperate now because now this is a quiet time now in sports. Between now and March Madness, they have to get stir up the pot. I want to point something out to uh, these insane people at WFAN. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I plan on doing videos and, and yucking it up and making fun of them for as long as I can. I plan on doing this for the next 25 years, and I'm going to plan on making fun of them, and I'm not going anywhere. Okay? I have no plans on going anywhere. I have no plans on on not... I mean, I've settled in now, folks. The videos that I'm doing on this channel, on the Baseball Hut, the Prospect Hut, the Football Channel, the Combo Hut, I'm not going anywhere. Okay? I am settled in. 
I'm in this for the long haul. Two, three years from now, Brandon Tierney and Sal Licata will be gone. Okay? Tiki Barber and Evan Roberts are going to be gone in five years. I'm not going anywhere. Boomer and Geo, Geo in five years is going to be gone. He's going to be taken off to the funny farm. And Boomer will have to bring in another guy that he's going to have to groom. I mean, he's going to have to work with. Uh, make sure that he pushes him around and, you know, in the, you know, in the, you know, in the wheelchair, make sure he doesn't, you know, break his hip when he has his walker out. He's got to, he's going to have to get a guy. Maybe he can get like a Jamaican man or a Jamaican woman to help him out. Mr. Boomer, we're going to make sure you don't like break your hip. You know, I mean, that's what's going to happen. I mean, one diversity, where are the women on all these shows? That would be great. Get Get a lesbian black woman to replace Geo. It's about the same anyway. Oh, he's not black. You know. Might as well do that. You know. I mean, eventually, you know, Spaz is going to be gone. He's going to be off WFA. He's going to be out of there. Because they're going to realize people are going to tie it of the, of, the, of the insanity. You know. And like I said about Greg Giannotti, he will be literally being taken off to the funny farm. And he'll be the next uh, guy... That'll be like a, 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 a casualty of the Boomer uh, morning show. Anyway, <laughs> and this is another report on the insane asylum known as WFAN.